Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 372. <laughs> I have a fun YouTube for you today. I have a you can do this YouTube. I have don't be afraid of this. I have a YouTube that you can't make a mistake you've got this it's that kind of class today so i'm really excited to bring it to you um it's hard to believe that 2020 that it, uh, thanksgiving is next week holy smokes artichokes 2020 is almost over and i'm kind of thankful for that <laughs> I'm glass half full for 2021. Who knows what we're going to get in 2021, but we're just going to take it in stride just like we have in 2020. The good news is we are going to have a Black Friday event. It's going to be a little different like all of the events we have had this year where it's not going to be a ships when it ships sell like they normally are. We obviously can't have an in-store event, but I have got some product for you at prices that are, oh my goodness, like, say what? <laughs> really, I have got some beautiful things for you. I've got a YouTube that's going to teach you how to use some of these things and pricing that will make your heart happy. Now, it all starts next Friday really Friday. We're not doing a month long Black Friday sale. Our Black Friday sale didn't start in October. Some some retailers, it's come on you guys, really Black Friday in October, but okay, whatever. Our Black Friday sale will start Black Friday at roughly 8 a.m. in the morning because that is when I will be doing our live chat for our YouTube on Friday, not Saturday. So if you usually live chat with me Saturday morning, set your alarm, set your calendar, put a note on the refrigerator, remind somebody that we'll be doing it Friday morning when the sale goes live. And the sale will go through the entire week because we're just gonna treat it like another YouTube even though we have doorbuster deals for you. I will tell you more about Black Friday as we go along in the week, you will find updates on our Facebook channel. You do not have to be a member of Facebook to go check us out and to read the postings to get updates. You don't have to log in. You don't have to sign up. Nothing. We are a public page, so we are visible to everybody. You won't be able to post a comment on Facebook, but you will be able to watch the videos and the daily Facebook features and get the most current information about what's going on here. Now, we are shipping anniversary sale orders. We are shipping simply defined orders. We are shipping uh, doodler orders from Aladdin. All types of orders are going out and we are just going to continue to press forward until we get caught up. Can't tell you when that's going to be because, well, who thought we'd still be closed in December, November, almost December, but we'll get there. It is what it is. We do our very best just like everybody else is doing right now, taking it one day at a time with a smile and blessings that we are even able to be open. So. Now today, today I have got the most amazing price <laughs> on Tombow markers. Like so amazing, we've never had this kind of pricing before, ever. I also have the latest collection of Simply Defined Kaleidoscope dies. It is, there's three of them, we, we do three of them, and they are floral, and they do sell out super fast. So if it's something you think you may want to purchase, because Simply Defined is my brand and they're one and done. When they're gone, they're gone. The only way we get them back in stock is if somebody cancels their order or doesn't pay for their order. So if you think you may want to get these dies, you may want to put me on pause. <laughs> this is my pause face. And go check out our website along with the Tombow markers. I mean, I guess one of the benefits to 2020 is that we've been able to negotiate and get some fabulous deals for you on product that I never would have got this price ever. I'm shocked I have it right now. So wahoo, ka-choo. 
I have, uh, I have winner winner chicken dinner to talk about. We're going to do that in just a minute. And I want to let you know that some of this YouTube will be a recap for some of you without, without a question. I am sure of that. And then when we get a little bit further in, there may be some things you didn't know <laughs> or a technique you haven't seen. In the beginning, though, we're going to start easy. I want to show people who don't know what Tombow markers are, how to use them, or as important, those of you who have Tombow markers, more ways of using them. <laughs> we all know Tombow for inking on or coloring our, our stamp and huffing and stamping with it so that you get lots of different colors on your stamped image, but we're going to play with them a couple different ways today. All right, so let me do winner, winner, chicken dinner, and then we're going to tilt down. We're going to get started for today. And remember, the next YouTube class will be on Friday, not Saturday, <laughs> 8 a.m. And that's when everything will go live. And I'll be doing updates on Facebook next week, giving you peeks of what we've got for you at special prices. All right, so winner, winner, chicken dinner. Who do we have? You can see my hands are inky. <laughs> I've been playing. <laughs> okay, who do we have for winner, winner, chicken dinner? Now, these two ladies uh, subscribe to our channel, which there's a little heart somewhere in this general vicinity with an SMS in the middle of it. If you move your cursor over that, uh, a subscribe bar will come up. Just click it and subscribe. Just click it. You know you want to. Go ahead. I give you permission. Click it. Once you do that, then you can post a comment on this YouTube, this YouTube. And once you do that, we approve it, assuming the comment is kind, and then you go into the running to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. We do a $25 gift card for two people every single week. And well, I've got two people who probably thought they were never ever gonna win. It is cold in this office. I think they've got the air conditioner like set down to 62. I am freezing, but that will keep me That'll keep me up and going, <laughs> no doubt about that. <laughs> okay, our first winner, winner chicken dinner is Chandra, Chandra Snyder. Chandra, is that you? Is that you? Are you a winner, winner chicken dinner? Are you going, holy smokes, artichokes? I know, I know, right? You never thought, but here it is. You are not alone, we have two of you. Who's our next winner, winner? Patricia, Patricia Hillsman. Hello, Patricia, is that you? Because if it is, well, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. I expect both of you ladies to be standing up and woo wooing and getting ready to do our winner, winner, chicken dance because that's what time it is. You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. I wonder if next week I'm gonna have to sing you're a winner, turkey dinner. I don't know if that goes. <laughs> we'll see, maybe that was a little too far. <laughs> All right, ladies, what do you have to do to claim your prize? Absolutely nothing. With any luck, I have already put it in your online account, and if I haven't by now, I'm doing it at this very moment. Go ahead, spend it. Okay, now if I were you, you, and, and of course this is me, not you. Now, these Tombow markers are at a phenomenal price, that's true. My kaleidoscope dies are limited and at a great price, that's true. But then there's also stuff next week, that's true too. You're gonna have to decide how you're gonna make the most of that 25 bucks, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, let me put those over there. We are gonna, like I said, start kind of simple and then move on from there and hopefully Hopefully, for those of you who have seen some of this, you'll wait with me to the end because, or towards the, the, the end, because that's when we'll move on to another technique that maybe you haven't seen. And for those of you who haven't seen any of it, well, I think you're in for a treat. I know you're in for a treat. Who knew markers could do this? All right, I'm gonna tilt on down. We're gonna get started for today. It is good to see you all. Down we go, bye. And then I've got to zoom on in and tilt on down. 
and maybe center a little bit more that way and zoom on in just a little bit more how's that i think that's okay okay it's gonna be okay all right so i wanted to show you this card done by sms girl belinda using one of the new simply defined kaleidoscope dies so pretty kaleidoscope dies are layering dies you always have three layers and a background die so she's got three layers on here and a background die now they are extremely value priced so that's i think one of the reasons they sell out so quickly is because how value priced they are this is one of them i'm going to put that back in her pile and i'm going to bring them over so the one i just showed you is right here each die is an a2 size die and to get the layering you have die one die one die two die three now you're gonna see lots of other things in the middle. That's because the die that actually starts the layering is only is only this die. That's the die that starts the layering process. But I had all of this real estate to fill in. I paid, I'm paying for all the metal. I pay for a piece of metal this big to make these dies. So when that happens and I have all that extra space, I start loading it with stuff. All the little uh, accoutrements, little added goodies. And then there's the background. So this die is here. And then all the different pieces to it all the different pieces to it. So die number one. And then we have die number two. Again, background die, a, a layering one, a layering two, a layering three, one that you can pop, Look at all the ladybugs and all of the Hello, sentiments. Please leave a message after the tone. That was the weirdest thing. Holy smokes, artichokes. Did you hear that? Calls will not be answered. Okay, good to know. <laughs> well, I'm not stopping. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't leave a message. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm not stopping. We're going through and I don't know how to edit, so it is what it is. Okay, so the sentiments come with them. You've got all those little ladybugs in all the different sizes, plus the dies, plus the background, and the sentiment on this one is follow your heart, embrace the journey, and choose joy. Boy, do we need that for this year. Uh-huh. Then the last one that, and the sentiments on the, on the sunflowery type is, or daisy, the daisy is dream big and well done. And then the last one I have for you today is probably my favorite. And that's the one I'm gonna be working with. I love this flower and then all the butterflies, so shadows and butterflies, and you can uh, have embossing with these. I've given you embossing opportunities. And then all the sentiments and the dyes. That was so weird. It's just been a weird year. That's all I, the doorbell rang last YouTube. <laughs> Okay, so the sentiments here stay, uh, say, stay positive, just imagine, it's the little things in life. It, that it's true, it is, it's the little things in life. So all of that comes on this set. And when you take the dies out that you actually need to make the layers, you have three dies, 
but then you also have a background die. Now, I know many of you use my background dies because I always do a background die with my kaleidoscopes. You use the background dies for just about anything and everything in, in card making and scrapbooking. And then there's all the little extra added bits you get as well. So I'm gonna be using this die today because I just, I love this die. And I'm gonna put the background over there because I'm not sure that we're actually gonna use it. And you have, you have, no, we'll go this way. You have three different dies. I feel like I'm playing shells and I'll pick one up and the little ball will be underneath. <laughs> you have your base die, which is your bottom die. It has the least amount of detail to it. You have die number two, which is your first layering die which has more detail to it. And then you have your last die, which is your outline die, which adds the final layers to it. Can you use them independently of each other? Well, you can absolutely use these two together with any question, without any question. And you can use these two together without any question. I'm not so much sure that you can get away with using these two. You kind of have to use your imagination just a little bit for it, I think. But definitely two here if you wanted to use these two on their own, two here if you wanted to use these two on your own, and of course you could just use this one on its own. So you have lots of options and we haven't even we didn't even play with the background die, which is which is fabulous all by itself. And I've got the samples to show you. The SMS girls did a great job. So today I think I'm gonna start with glitter and Tombow markers. And again, I'm not gonna spend a tremendous amount of time on it because I've done it before, but I wanna give people who have never seen this uh, an opportunity to play. There we go. And, and feel comfortable about what we're doing. For that, I really am not going to need, I'm not gonna need the middle die so much. Yeah, I'm not gonna use the middle die so much. I'm really gonna focus on these two, which is your base die, and then your layering die, which allows you to add detail. Microfine glitter. Microfine glitter is kind of not hard to find. It's not the easiest thing in the world. And then on top of that, microfine glitter that has no glitter in it at all is even harder. So I came out with my own a couple years ago. It's called, it's, it's white, it's glitter without glitter is what it is. It's a glitter that has absolutely zero iridescence to it at all. And it is ground so fine that it is a microfine glitter. There is ultrafine glitter, which is ground not as fine as a microfine. There's regular glitter, there's chunky glitter. You can have a red glitter ground in, there, there's got to be 12 different types of grinds that you can have, kind of like coffee. Do you, is your coffee ground really fine or is it ground kind of coarse? That's up to you. But this is a glitter without glitter and that's what we call it. You'll find it, it's um, Simply Sparkle White. And, and there's a reason for this. I brought this out with a very specific purpose and that's what I'm going to use it for today. The only reason I brought this out, now you can use it for anything. It is glitter and it will hold with tape, you know, double-sided tape or with your glue. But again, for the technique I wanted, I needed something that had the texture of glitter, that had the, the coverage of glitter but did not have any glitter in it. So my glitter without glitter has been out of stock for close to a year. <laughs> it is finally back, <laughs> a year. So better late than never, right? So it's here so I can work with it. Now I'm gonna start by, hmm, I'm gonna start by die cutting this piece out of black paper. And I've got my, my black. The kaleidoscope dies are A2 sized. 
So they're uh, the typical size that you find most background dies in, but I'm sure you're, you can see that the pricing on them is amazing to get four dies and all the extras for the price we put them out at is just wonderful. Now I'm going to cut my I'm going to cut my 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 detail my my outline die first and I'm going to bring over my Sizzix Big Shot machine. So I'm using just the standard regular Sizzix Big Shot machine. You can use a Big Kick, a Big Shot Plus, a Big Shot Pro, a Vagabond, a Platinum, a Platinum 8, a Gemini, what die cutting machine do you have? Because this die is going to fit. It will even fit a cuddle bug die without any problem. What you do need though is a precision base plate. All of my dies tend to be very intricate and you will want a precision base plate to help the little bits and pieces fall out if you are using a Sizzix machine. In addition, I have, if you are just getting yourself a Sizzix Big Shot machine, or a big kick machine, you will see that the platform has changed. This is the platform that they come with now. It is just a base platform and it gives you instructions on what you can do if you want to use embossing folders or a squishy and a knock knock. What is it you want to do? Then if you want to cut wafer style dies, which is what this die is, because it's wafer, see how thin it is? It's a chemically etched die. Then you're going to put the shim right on top of it and that's going to start your sandwich. Before this was hinged and there was a little hinge here and it kept everything together. They tended to crack a little bit so Ellison Sizzix has gone with a two a two piece multi-purpose platform and that's what this is. It's their new multi-purpose platform. So I'm going to cut a wafer die which means I need to start with my base plate and my uh, thin shim or my thin die adapter. Then I'm going to put my precision base plate. Please remember if you can read the directions and it's facing you and you're reading those directions, you're doing it wrong. I need you to have that metal facing up. See, you can see me. Hi. <laughs> it's kind of fun mirror-ish right? like at the fun house, but then your paper goes down then your die with the ridges against it go down. And because this die has a, um, a rectangular shape, I want to make sure that I take it just a little bit on the diagonal because there's a roller here in this machine. And if you put your hand underneath it, you can feel the roller. I can even make the, I can even make the little handle move back and forth with the roller. I don't want my die parallel with that roller because it will give me a thump. Will it hurt the die? No. Will it hurt the machine? No. Will it scare you? Maybe. <laughs> so it's better just to turn the die on a little bit of an angle. And then I need a cut plate or a do not cut plate to put on top and that finishes off my sandwich. That's what I need to get it through my machine to make it cut. So I'm going to roll, roll, roll little creaks and cracks are not a problem. And because this die isn't as intricate as some of my others, I don't, I'm not going to roll it back. I think it's going to come out just fine. Oh yeah, it's going to come out just fine. And then all my little bits and pieces fall out. And this is just 80 pound cardstock is all this is, is 80 pound cardstock. So if you've never seen die cutting before, who would think a little piece of metal that has no blade in it at all, that die just has a ridge, no blade, would be able to cut paper into beautiful things. So I'm gonna, oh, Mr. SMS's desk floor is gonna look bad. You know what, and I'm gonna cut one more just while I've got it out right here. I'm gonna cut one more just so I can. And down, die, a little bit of an angle, send, and cut. Little creaks and cracks are okay. Move over. 
and all my bits and pieces come out. That is a happy day. All right, now I've got two of these. Awesome. So I'm going to put those off to the side, and next I'm going to grab a piece of white paper. And I don't care if my white paper is dirty, if it's ivory, I just white paper. I, it doesn't matter if it, you know, this one's got a little smudge on it. I'm going to pretend that that doesn't even exist. And I'm going to bring over also some double-sided tape. Now this is my double-sided tape, and my double-sided tape, this is the five inch roll. The six inch roll is a little bit bigger, but it goes all the way down to something smaller than this. This is, I think this is half inch, and we go all the way down to eighth inch. So we have eighth inch and quarter inch and half inch and, or three eighths of an inch and half, or half inch and, and one inch and I think one and a half, two inches, two and a half, five and six. It is double-sided adhesive. It is super strong. It's heat resisted. We, we use it for everything. Yes, you can emboss, you can heat emboss on top of this. It is amazing. Is it the only double-sided tape out there? No, but I wanna make sure you know not all double-sided tapes are the same. Please buy from somebody reputable. Scorpel, their Sukwang tape is awesome. Elizabeth Crafts tape is awesome. Um, people really like my tape because my liner's a little bit thicker, it's easier to get off. The tape's a little bit longer, it's a little bit stronger, and it doesn't yellow. So not all double-sided adhesive is the same, and if you are buying it from, let's say, the Dollar Tree, you just need to know if it works for you, awesome, but if you're struggling with it, it's because it's just not quite the same. Now you saw me tear off a piece, and that is sticky right now. That is sticky. I have got to do something with this now. So I'm just going to put it right down on my piece of paper. Yeah. Okay, down I go. If it has little bumps in it, don't worry about it. When we die cut it, it's going to pull it all out. I'm just going to cut that piece on out. Probably used more than I needed but that's okay. Now, until I do something with this, I can leave this like this for days, weeks, months, until I pull the liner off and expose the sticky. So now that's sticky right now. Until I take this liner off, I could just make stacks of these and have them ready to go. Entirely up to you. But if you start and then you change your mind, you don't throw this away. No, no, no. You just put it away until you decide to use it. You may end up cutting it smaller. Whatever you decide to do with it, that's okay. I'm going to go back and remember, I have three dies. One, two, three. I already cut this one. Right there. I'm not going to use this one right now. So out of the sticky, my new sticky paper, I'm going to cut my base. I did cut a little too much. That's okay, we'll just trim this off and I'll use this for something else later on. I never throw this away. Why? if I turn it over and I die cut something here, I've now made it an instant sticker. Yes, I, we don't throw that away. I'm going to bring my machine back over. I am still working with a wafer or a chemically etched type of die. It's not as intricate as my other dies. I could get away with not using the precision base plate because it is not intricate. I still need to use my base platform and my thin die adapter. And then I can put my clear plate down. I want to cut, I don't want to make this a sticker. I don't want to cut on the paper and then peel off the back to make it a sticker. I want to use the adhesive that's under here. So I'm going to put the adhesive face up 
and my die face down and another cut plate. And that happens to be a do not cut plate. And then I'm gonna send it on through. And because it's not as intricate as my other dies, it doesn't need that precision base plate. This is more of an open frame die, which means that I could stick my finger right through the die. Unlike, let's pull this one out. Okay, so here it is. This is all that die does. That's all it cuts. You're like, really? I'm like, uh-huh, really? But you can see it's far more open. I can stick my whole hand through there. Unlike this die that is very intricate and has tiny little pieces that fall out, this absolutely needs a precision base plate. This does not that one back over there. So I've cut this out of Stacy tape with the tape facing up. I'm going to bring over one of my black pieces. I want to make sure I've got all the little doohickeys out. So all the little black. Make sure I pop all of those out. I still don't have tweezers yet. We're working on it. Like I said, it took almost a year for me to get my white glitter back. And you just gotta take the good when you get the good. <laughs> and I'm happy about having my white glitter back. Okay, so I popped all the little pieces out. Now, I'm gonna peel off the liner. I'm gonna peel the liner off of this. This is still just white cardstock on the back. Just white cardstock. But I'm gonna peel off the liner. and expose the sticky. So this is sticky right now. I have to do something with it. What am I gonna do? Well, I wanna glitter this with my glitter that has no glitter, my, my glitter that's not glitter. I wanna glitter this because I wanna color in the detail here. Now, I think intuitively, people then want to take the glitter, whatever it is that they're doing, and just put it right on there and then come back and glue this over the top. I need you to do it differently. I need you to take your outline and put that directly onto your taped piece of paper, your paper that has been die cut with Stacy tape on top of it. And I'm gonna line this up to the best of my abilities while I'm sitting down and not standing. And instantly you can see the flower come through. Then I'm gonna take the liner. Now I pulled this liner off to expose the sticky. Pulled the liner off so I could put the black down. Well, if I start pressing it down with my fingers, it's gonna stick to me because it's sticky. But what doesn't stick to the sticky? The liner. So I'm just gonna go in there and I'm just gonna see, I can look at that. I can pull and I can press and make sure my black cardstock is down really good. Down really good. I got a few little things in it, but let's see if I can get a few little things out. Yeah, it is what it is. It's handmade. All right, so now you can see the flower coming to life. But it's sticky. What am I going to do with that? Now I'm going to add my glitter. So let me grab a piece of cardstock to use as a funnel. Cut this in half. Got to be careful while I put everything because that's sticky right now. If I touch this, uh-huh, now I've put my fingerprint in it, but that's okay. 
better that you see than not learn. I'm just going to make a little and put this in here and take my glitter and it's glitter without glitter so you're if you're looking for iridescence you're not going to find it with this. I do have an iridescent glitter that hopefully is back in stock in the next week. <laughs> also after being out of stock for almost a year. And I just let the glitter kind of walk itself on down. And anywhere there's that sticky tape exposed, the glitter is just going to cling itself to there. Okay, now I'm going to put all of this back into my jar. You use very, very little glitter. This jar is almost a lifetime supply of microfine white glitter or glitter without the glitter. I've got my cleanup cloth that would work. Now I do have to give this a little bit of a burnish. I do have to go in with my finger, my red finger, and give it a burnish. So I'm cementing that glitter in place. Now I'm not just like rubbing it soft and I'm not rubbing it so hard that I'm gonna rub straight through the glitter and the paper and the tape. I need to give a nice, a nice massage, a nice all over rub and then take um, an inexpensive makeup brush and brush off the, look at that, it took the pink from my fingers. <laughs> All right, so that's what I've got left, and I'm not even going to try to to put that in a jar. It's I've got so much left. It's in the jar. I, I a lifetime supply. All right. So remember, I said there's no iridescence to it, and you can't see any inner iridescence. But what I've been able to do with that glitter is make a different surface. Now I don't just have a piece of paper. I have a piece of paper that has a piece of adhesive on top of it that is heat resistant and super strong. And on top of that, I've got a microfine glitter that really isn't glitter. What are we gonna do next? That's where the Tombow markers come into play. And I think I'm gonna bring this over here, just a regular piece of paper over, so you can see the difference. Um, okay, so what colors do we want to do? What colors make our heart happy? Ooh. So we'll play, how about we play in the pinks? I did one in reds and pinks earlier when I was playing. How about the pinks? So Tombow. Tombow has, these are not new colors. None of them are new colors, but what they are are six packs that are being we are allowed to retail them for $9.99 a pack oh my gosh normally these run $17 and they're worth every penny of $17 truly they are worth every penny I think Tombow makes 108 colors we carry all the colors these are amazing, but we have never been given the, the authorization to sell them at $10 a set. We sell the, the, the individual markers, I want to say, for close to $3. That's, well, yeah, they're $18, I mean, for $10. So if you do not have Tombow markers and you've always wanted them, now is the time. This is a great time to get one set, two sets. They've put them in the hues, which is so nice. You don't have to guess. These are not alcohol-based markers. These are a water-based marker. They're a dye marker. But if you do any kind of lettering or you follow anybody who does lettering, you will find that they use Tombows more often than not. So what am I going to do with them? Well, I think I'm going to take the pinks and maybe the reds. Let's open them up. And 
the one thing that you don't get in the sets is what they call a blender. It is not a blender, it is a total misnomer. Don't be confused. You're not gonna be able to blend anything with it. If, to me, if I was, if I saw something that was like a blender pen and it is their N00, I would think that I could take this marker here and this marker here. Oh, those are too close. Those are way close. They really match these well. Oh, just look at how nicely they graduate in color. That just makes my heart happy. I would think that I would be able to do all of those and then take my pen and it would move them all together. I would be wrong. That is not what this pen does. This pen is meant for palette painting where I could take um, if I turn this over, I could take my marker and scribble some there and then come in with this and then palette paint and it will, you'll see the gradation in color. That's what this marker is meant for is that you can go in and palette paint. Now I put it on the back of here so you could see it. I could have very easily just put it right onto my craft mat and done the same thing. As long as you put the ink on something that is non-porous, you're gonna be fine because it is a dye-based ink. It will not dry on there. So like I said, if I had wanted, I could have just put a whole bunch of pink right on my, on my craft mat and then gone in That is what this marker does. That's what this marker does. And for what we're gonna do, you're going to need that marker, but it is not sold with the sets, the $10 sets, and I, I get it, I get it. They already gave us an amazing price. No complaints here. Did I just put that on my, and I did. I am so bad at doing that. Okay, so I've got some markers here. Let me get out that dark pink. Almost a burgundy. And maybe bring in the, I think that light pink's gonna be too light. All right, I'm coming back here and I'm going to color this. I'm going to take, let's say, this color. And I'm going to not color with the, not with the nib. I'm not gonna take it and put that nib down. In fact, let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. So I'm not going to use the tip of my pen to color. I'm gonna use the side of my pen. And when I start, I'm also not going to color. I'm gonna just kind of dab my color down little dots and I'm not going to color the entire space. So I've just done little dots. Look at all that white space. That's called negative space and that is super important to me because then I'm going to take this blender non-blender pen, this N00 pen, and as long as it goes white, it doesn't matter what color that nib is. Mine's a whole bunch of colors because I use it all the time. This pen, I am absolutely going to, to get in there and move around. And what you will see is it takes that color and it blends it together. And then as I wipe it off, I can start pulling that color out. Now what makes this pen so important is that I need to, even if I don't like the color that I've got, I need to put this all over the glitter. I'm just gonna color all over the glitter because it adds it adds a substance to it that allows the, the ink to be blended on the glitter. 
Now, that doesn't look so great. It doesn't look half bad, but it's not so great. I can do better than that. Now I can go in and let's add that color again. And this time, because I have got this N00 down, again, you don't want to use the, 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 the point of the pin. You always want to use the side of the pin. But now I can take a dauber. And because I'm doing such a big space, I just pulled it right out. Pulled it right out. Now, what if I wanted to, maybe I do want to go in there with this super light. No, wait. <laughs> maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come over. Let's, then I'm going to grab that color too. I'm going to grab some oranges. So maybe I want to go in with a little bit of an orange. You're like, really? Orange? Well, why not? What have we got to lose? Right now, we're using white paper, some tape, and a, and a, a black piece of cardstock. What if I added some orange to the top? Again, using the side of my pen. Now, because it has got the glitter, and it's got that Tombow Blender, all I have to do is start to blend it on in. Look at how smooth and seamless that is. You want more pink? Okay, go back and add, add more pink. Now you can, because you've taken down the the, um, the slight roughness of the glitter, which is already micro fine, so it's already as fine as it can be. And maybe I want to get some real depth in here. Maybe I want some real depth. I'm going to add this really dark kind of burgundy plum color to the bottom. Grab my blender. Now I use my fingers but I know some of you are gonna be like, oh no, I cannot do that with my fingers. I do, I just go in there and smudge it with my fingers. And I have started. So now I can come here and remember your first coat, you really wanna kinda of dotty it. You don't wanna, you don't wanna do large strokes because it's a little rough and you'll be able to feel this versus this. They feel entirely different. This is a little rough, and for glitter, I mean, it doesn't feel rough at all. But compared to over here, you will feel a difference. And I'm just gonna kind of dot some down there. Just kind of dot some in. And this is a bigger piece, so maybe I add a little bit more. And then I wanna take my blender and the blender pins are very inexpensive. I think they're somewhere around $3 each. And they're going to last you a really long time. You may want to have a blender just for when you want to use your glitters. When we used Copics with this years ago, we always told you to have, your, uh, to have a Copic blender just for the glitter because the nib will eventually start to wear down a little bit. There's no question about it. It is more of a rough surface. So I'm just pulling this out. I'm really not worrying about whether it's pretty or not. I just want to get all over with that blender pen. Because once I do that, I can take my finger or my dauber. And start to pull it out and have a smooth finish uh-huh now I already added my orange to that one so I'll add some orange to this one you're like no don't it's like well it's too late sorry Pull that in 
And if I wipe it off, that's because I'm trying to get rid of some of the ink that's on the dauber. And then I can take that dark plum color If you are not a colorer, you are a colorer now. This, this is not hard. I'd like to say it takes a lot of skill, but it doesn't. <laughs> I would, I'd like to say it takes a lot of skill. I could even take my super light pink and come back up here and maybe lighten that up just a little bit if I wanted to. Let's use a different dauber so it's a little cleaner and lighten up so I have a little bit more of a highlight there. I got black in there. Boo. And let's lighten it up. So now I've got more of my shadow and my mid-tone and my highlight and in no time at all you have colored a super big piece that you might be a little fearful of. I'm just gonna put it all, I'm just gonna do it all. A little bit here, just kinda dab it. You don't wanna rub, you wanna dab. Let's grab my blender pen and it doesn't matter if it's pretty or not. All I'm trying to do is move it and color in my whole section. Even if it colors clear, I'm just trying to get this blender pen over all of my section. Because then I'm able to take my little dauber or my finger just depends upon whether you're okay with that or not and smooth that color out and I always start with kind of a mid-tone I could just use one shade and not do any kind of a blend. I could, absolutely. But since they've already made the marker so beautiful and, and that the colors coordinate so well together, I thought, well, we'll do blends today. So you may go through the N00 Gosh, it's going to take you some time. These pens last a really long time. Now I can go back in. And with the colors that make my heart happy. I can add some shadow. I can add some shading. And I'm just pulling that color out, pulling that color out. I want to make this really dark because it's kind of the flip of the. And I'm just going to gently soften out. I'm going to leave this almost white at the top. And in no time at all, you're almost done. You want more pink, you want red in there. What, what is it that you want? How do you want this to look? 
you can go back in and add any time. And because I have kind of knocked down the glitter, it's not as hard on my nibs. You got this. Is it as easy as I made it look? It really is. It really is. And that's just use it. Now you feel it. It's so soft. It does feel like velvet. It just feels smooth. But you could never, ever, ever do this ever on plain paper. No can do. You've got to use a double-sided tape and a micro-fine glitter that doesn't have any glitter. This has no iridescence to it. Can you do it with an iridescent micro-fine glitter? Of course you can. Yes, I have one. Hopefully it's coming back soon. But what if you don't want that iridescence, that glitter, bam, hello, pal? That's why I did this. You needed a microfine that lets you still color without being so blingy. And it really is. How much color do you want to add? How dark do you want to go? What, what, what colors do you want to blend? You make the decisions. And you can't make mud. It's, it's really hard to make mud. So... I don't know. What do you think? Can you do this? I think you can. And you need just open dies that will allow you to move that color around. Open dies that will allow you to move the color around. Okay, one way to use Tombow markers. What's the next way? Totally different, completely different. Nothing to do with glitter. Nothing to you do with tape. So let's let's move on. But you can see how my hands get so inky because truly I am the girl who will just put it in there and then take my finger and schmooze it myself. <laughs> That makes my heart so happy. <laughs> I, I know some of you are going, never. Okay. Ta-da. <laughs> so like I said, okay, I want to put these away because otherwise I get in, I, I don't get in trouble, but um, I get in a little trouble because I, <laughs> the poor girls have to, they come in and they help clean up after me. I come up with them and they're like, ah. <laughs> Okay, there's one pack, and then I only used the orange out of this one. Okay, now what are we going to do with Tombow markers? Because we've done this one. Ooh, ah. And I didn't, remember, I didn't use the middle, the middle die to add more detail in it. I just used the back and the front, and then you can mat this, put this on paper behind it, however you want to do it. Moving on. I need to talk to you. So I'm going to zoom on back. Okay. I need to tell you, honestly, not all watercolor paper is the same. It is not. It is not. I know this. I have played with enough watercolor paper to know there is a difference. There just is. I have one pack of watercolor paper coming in for a YouTube that I'm going to be doing 
January 2nd. It's a lesser expensive quality of watercolor paper, but what we're going to be using it for, you don't need anything better. However, for what we're doing today, I will not and would not use that watercolor paper in this YouTube. It is not good enough. There are different levels of everything. There are other markers out there that look like Tombow, but they're not. They're not the same quality or look like Marvi. Marvi Yoshida makes excellent markers, but the knockoffs aren't the same. When you're working with crafting, you always want the best that you can have even if it means it takes you longer to get it. Because on certain things, washi tape, buy whatever washi tape makes your heart happy, really. But on certain things, having better quality product means your results are better from the start. That's why we carry a lot of fine art product here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Not that I expect you to be a fine artist, and certainly not because I am a fine artist, but if you start with better product, your end result is always better, and you feel better because you didn't have to work it so hard. So I am using a better quality of watercolor paper today. You can certainly try the watercolor paper you have. It may be primo may work just fine. But I know that there are many different grades of watercolor paper. So if this doesn't work with the watercolor paper you have, it's not you. It's the paper. <laughs> it's never me. It's the paper. <laughs> I don't want you to think that you try this at home and don't get the same result. It's you. It's the paper. Blame it on the paper because it's true. So I'm going to tilt down and we're going to start. This is so easy and so fun. And it makes my heart so happy. And it's so achievable by everybody. Kids, everybody. All right, we're going to, down we go and we'll continue. Sorry, but I had to tell you, it's not you, it's the paper, honest. Let me zoom on in. <laughs> hey girl, hey, it wasn't me, it was the paper. <laughs> okay, we are using Van Gogh watercolor paper today. It's a beautiful watercolor paper. I'm using the postcard size just because I like it, it's convenient. It actually has the writing on the back so you could you could do something here, stamp something, watercolor something, and then send it to somebody. I, I happen to like the size and this is what I have for you today. If you already have watercolor paper and you want to try it with yours, I'm all for that. I just need you to know if it doesn't work, it's not you, it's the paper. And in January, I will have a lesser quality and it will be less money. But what we're using it for is perfect. I don't want you to, I don't want you to buy the finest quality paper and then use it like you would copy paper. If copy paper is gonna work for something, let's use copy paper. But for today, today's a no-go. Let me pull some of this off. All right. So Van Gogh does not do a hot press or a cold press paper. They just do watercolor paper and it's a Royal Talons brand which is a company that we do business with we buy the fine tech colors from them and all sorts of stuff but it's it's not a hot cold or a, 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 a hot press or a cold press watercolor paper it is slightly toothy it is super thick it's beautiful you do get 25 in a pack um, and it's just absolutely lovely I want to I want to take some of the markers. I think this time we'll use some blues and some greens. And maybe a light blue and a medium blue. 
and maybe some, oh no, I'm going to use some purples. And, I don't know, maybe a median. All right, let's play with these colors. They look good, right? If I were to take these and even if I were to take the lightest one first, scribble, 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 scribble. And then maybe the next color, scribble, scribble, scribble. And then maybe the darkest color, scribble, scribble, scribble. And then I was to mist it. Now I'm just on cardstock, 100 pound cardstock, regular white cardstock, my cardstock. And then I was to mist it. That's what I'm going to get. It isn't going to move. I can't make it swoosh. It's going to stay just like that. The ink, being a dye-based ink, has absorbed into the cardstock. It doesn't sit on top, it absorbs into the cardstock quickly, which is why these are so great if we're playing with stamps and you have a tree stamp and you put the, the green ink on the top of the tree and then you take a, a Tombow marker and you ink the top of the tree green and then another Tombow marker and you ink the trunk brown and then you go back with maybe a lighter green and hit it and then you stamp it because you have the stamped image that's in full color. These are beautiful for that. But not this. To do that, you need watercolor paper. And what if I took my light color and I scribble, scribble, scribble. And you see I'm using the side of my marker, not the nib. I don't want to lose that beautiful nib. That beautiful nib, if you want to write something, is fabulous. So I've got some my light and maybe, oh, I got my red hand on there. Maybe a little bit of my next color and then maybe some light purple. That's very light. Well, all we can do is see what happens. It runs, it moves, it it dances, it 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 blends. It doesn't do this. It allows you to take your Tombow markers and easy peasy. Let's add a little water. Easy peasy. If you don't know how to watercolor, and you do now, well I could take it and I could turn it around and, oh, you're saying it's warping. I know, all you gotta do is take a little mister, boop. Just miss the back and all of a sudden the warping will be gone. And I can just sit here and play. Now I lost all my purple. What if I wanted to put some purple back in? now my purple is blending with my blue making a different color. Just a light mist. And let's see if I can pick up some of this purple. Oh yeah. And then I can play. You're not sure how to watercolor? Don't worry about it. Get out your markers. Light mist. And zoop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want it darker somewhere? Go in and pick up some more color. And you can just let it run. Or if you want to kind of smear it a little bit, it's up to you. Your options, your, your watercoloring, your watercoloring. 
And you're like, but it doesn't, I don't know that that looks pretty. Oh, but wait. Ooh. And just let it run. This isn't about being precise or exact or anything. This is about just having fun. What if I let that one sit? And then I bring this one over. And what if I go, I always like to start, well, should I wipe that off? Gosh, I almost feel guilty doing that. Hmm. All right, I'll wipe. No, I don't know. I feel guilty doing that. It's right there and it's perfect. What if I just do this one really quickly over here and add some light blue? Just give it a nice foundation. Always start with a nice foundation. And then let's kind of mist it. My pink is coming off from my hands and then maybe let's put some really good purple in here. And while this is running and wet, let's see what we get. Oh, how soft and pretty is this? Up to you how dark you want to go. What if I... Okay, now I will lift this up. What if I started with my light blue? Is this that's my medium blue. I'm going to turn this over really quick and just do a quick mist on the back. So it'll start to flatten out. Can you see it flattening out? It starts to flatten out all by itself with a quick, quick mist on its back. So I'm just going to put that one over there. Oh, I might come back and do something with that one in a minute. What if I started with my light blue? I'm using the side of my marker. And then I came in with my kind of light purple. And then maybe a little darker blue. And then my really dark purple. I have no idea what we're going to get. And I spray. And then I just let it do its thing. And can I go in there with a paintbrush? Sure. Can I go in there with my finger? Sure. I just let it do its thing. Can I turn it upside down? Sure. Can I add some more purple and some more dark blue? The minute I turn it upside down, it's gonna blend a little bit nicer together. It's gonna kind of smooth out a little bit. Can I schmooze? Schmooze. Schmooze. Ooh. You've watercolored. That's it. <laughs> it's not as hard as everybody, well, as it can seem. You can make beautiful backgrounds by schmoozing. So let's go with this one. Let's bring this one back and let's dip in. And I can mist it again. And let it do it just let it do its thing if you want to get rid of some of the well, I like the texture so I don't mind that I'm gonna leave my texture because it makes my heart happy
in like no time at all, bam, bam, right? Can I pick up the color if I want? Sure, sure I can. Let's do one more. Let's do, let's do one really kind of purpley. Um, so let's start with this, this light purple. And let's go all over. And use that as our base, because I always like to start with a base color. And then let's take our, that's dark blue. Let's maybe take some of our dark purple. And this time just a hint of blue. And the blue may fade away when we add our water. You don't know what you're gonna get until you, until you start letting it do its thing. And then it's up to you. Do you want to start playing with it, moving it around with a paintbrush? Do you want to be specific where you put your color? You absolutely can be very specific where you put your color. You have control if you want control, or do you want to give up control? <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> I am so sorry, but this just makes my heart so happy. <laughs> It's not often I give up control, but when it comes to this, I am perfectly fine with it. I am A-OK. -okay. okay, but I told you, can you pick your color back up? I am so sad to do this, but yes. Oh, that made my heart hurt. <laughs> okay, I picked my color back up. <laughs> can I start again? Yes. Do I want to? No, I liked what I had done. I was really happy with it. <laughs> now this is kind of wet, so I can put it on here. And spray and it'll start moving again. That's the difference between good watercolor paper and not so good watercolor paper. Meh, watercolor paper, you are not going to have the opportunity to go back and do and do and do and change and fix and add and take away. Mm -mm. You got to use the right tool for what you're doing. Not to say that there, a lesser quality watercolor paper isn't okay for certain applications. It absolutely is. It's just not perfect for this application. And really, it's it, it's not like it's overly, terribly, horribly expensive. And we're not the only people to have good watercolor paper. You may be able to find it um, online someplace else for a lesser price. And we would totally understand if that's where you go to shop without question. So now I've got this. Did I put that on the right one? I think so. And maybe I want to add just a little more blue over here. A little light in the blue there. I can just give a spray and kind of move it. And then purple. So you make it what makes your heart happy. But you're using Tombow markers. Seriously, Tombow. So now I'm gonna leave that one also to dry and I think I'm gonna come back to this one. Let's pick up a little bit more color if I can. All right, I'm good. It works. Now what do I do with it? Now I die cut it. So I am gonna blot it off because I am gonna die cut with it and it's not quite dry yet. I think I'm gonna use this one as my background. And this one as my second color. Okay, so this time I am gonna pull, I am gonna pull that, um, 
that second die. So remember, I have the three. I have the background one that does the base, I've got the one with the most detail, and then I've got the outline die. And the outline die is the die I used when I did here. I did the base and the outline together to go here. Now I'm going to use all three. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut this piece out here. I want you to know that the the watercolor paper is slightly smaller than my die. The watercolor paper is A6 and not A2. What does that mean? That means that A6 is a little bit longer than an A2 die and a little bit narrower than an A2 die. They're almost the same, but watercolor paper generally doesn't come A2, A6. So you're going to have to kind of kind of make it center. You're going to have you're going to lose a little off the top and a little off the bottom. Okay, it's not going to matter. Trust me. Makes no difference. When we get to the end, you will never know that. Never, I promise. I'm going to pull over my pull over my big shot machine. And I've got my multi-purpose platform base plate, my thin die adapter plate. I do not need to use two cut plates because I absolutely have to use a precision base plate. No doubt about it. Hooey, have I made a mess on my table. Hooey. Okay, I'm gonna try and kind of center. You know, just you wanna make sure that um, you're not going to get the very top and the very bottom, but you want to make sure you get all of the design. And that's all I need. Put it at a slight angle, put my cut plate on top, or my do not cut plate, and send it on through. Now it's cutting through pretty hardy watercolor paper, but the watercolor paper is wet. So that helps cut just a little bit easier. Let's see. Oh, that looks like it cut. That looks like it cut pretty good. Let's pull it out and see what we get. Send. Yeah, cut lovely, didn't it? So you'll be able to see that I got more of the edge on the bottom than I did at the top. I almost didn't get any edge at the top at all. Okay, I'm okay with that. Then I'm gonna take, oh, so close to Mr. SMS's trash can. I was this close to making it. Then I'm gonna take this really dark one, still wet, but I'm gonna go for it. And I'm gonna cut out the background. Again, it's not going to cut all the way to the top or the bottom. I'm going to do my best to kind of kind of center it so that I get a little bit of an edge on the top and a little bit of an edge on the bottom. That's my goal. But again, if I don't, I'm not going to care. It's going to be just fine. I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to go. I would say it's only paper, but actually this is really nice watercolor paper. <laughs> okay. So, oh, and I don't need my precision base plate with this one. So I will use a cut plate. I don't need the precision base plate because the die is already, it's, it's an open die. It's an easy die to cut. It's not very intricate at all. What do you think? I think we're close. Hmm. Hmm, okay, we're gonna go for it. I thought about changing the orientation of the paper, but 
It's only paper. Let's go. Remember, that's all it's supposed to cut. Less pieces fall out, less to be on Mr. SMS's floor. And then the last, oh, this is also pretty. Maybe I cut this one too, just because. It's such a pretty piece of watercolor paper. It really is, and it's Tombow markers. Oh my gosh. And it took me, I played with it, I, I played with it more than it needed to be played with. I just, oh, I don't need the precision base plate. Let's take the precision base plate off, Stacy. I don't need it. There we go. That's why, there we go. Don't need the precision base plate. Let's line it up. This is a pretty piece. It's not going to be exact. I know that. A little bit of spritz of some water and away we went. Okay, so I cut both of those just in case. I That way I have options. <laughs> You're like, really? I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> so I've got this one cut and that one cut and this one cut. And last but not least, I need the detail. So let's grab a piece of black paper. Or you could grab a piece of blue paper or a piece of purple paper, whatever makes your heart happy. Okay. Intricate lines. Precision base plate. Take off my bottom cut plate, the clear plate that I had down there. I don't need that right now. I need that precision base plate, my paper, my die, and my cut plate back on top and send it on through. Roll, roll, roll. Let's take a look at the back and see if we got a good cut. Oh, that looks like a great cut. Move this on over. And I think just for giggles, I'm going to grab one more piece. I'm going to grab one more piece. When I say one, I meant two. And I am going to go I'm going to give that one a second to dry. And while that one's drying, wipe down. And let's do one in 
blue or that teal. Who knew your markers could do this? Have you tried it? Have you done it? Maybe you're like, um, hello, me. I knew my markers could do that. I think Tombow markers are one of the un most underutilized things people have in their, their crafty arsenal. I think the, the amazing beauty you can get out of them with the vibrancy of the colors for the price. See, I'm just using my finger. I could get it real wet and kind of schmooze. Well, I hope that's dark enough. I got the other one really dark. All right, I'm gonna let that one dry for a minute and I'm gonna bring this one back over, grab another paper towel. I'm just gonna blot this cause it's really wet, but we're gonna send it through our Big Shot machine anyway. So I cut this one in black. Now I'm gonna cut it in the purple and let's see. It's gonna be a little small. I get that. but I'm gonna be a-okay with it. Bring it back over. Now the Couture Creation bottle that you see I'm using, the Mister, it's a beautiful product. Beautiful. I just got it in to play with and test. I love it. I don't know that I'll be able to go back to a mini mister, but we will not have them until January. I know, that's what I said. I called Ozzy Andrew right before I started. I said, really, are we sure January? Oh, see, there was the thump thump. I wasn't on an angle. And he said, January. So stay tuned, because this, this is a little bit of happiness right here in a misting bottle. The mist is so fine and so beautiful. And then I'm gonna cut it one more time. Oh, maybe I don't cut it one more time. Hmm. Nope, we're gonna cut it cut it one more time. Or maybe I cut the middle one one more time. There's just so many options. No, well, yeah, so many options. Let's cut the middle one one more time out of this really dark, dark, dark blue. Then we've got lots to play with. So it really becomes what colors make your heart happy. And for $10 for those markers, holy smokes artichokes. We can't, we don't even have them open stock for that kind of price. And now when you see, I mean, what most people use them for is not this. They're so underutilized and there's so many options. And no, not every marker can do this. Okay, so now we've got some to play with. Then it becomes, what do you like? I've got this background. With this over the top. And then that over 
the top. And it can go that way or it can go this way. Oh, make my heart happy, right? Or I could take that off. And I could put this really dark purple. Oh, make my heart happy. Or I could take off that, the light one that kind of just was a mishmash, whatever. And I could put on my really dark blue. And my black. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or I could take this one, the background off, and go with a lighter background. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or I could take that off. And do that one over the top. You have options. <laughs> Good watercolor paper, amazing markers, and just let your heart go. Do you have to be in control of it? Okay, then get a little paintbrush and you can put your water where you want and you can put your colors where you want. Are you free to be, to be me? Are you free to just let it run a wild and be abandoned? Then color it down and schmutz it up and turn it over and start to build. I have something not on right. Oh, that would help if that was, I'm like, something's not right here. There we go. That lines up so much better. Free to build. And now I know you're going, okay, but Stacy, how do I put this all together? Oh, it's easy. Truly it is. Just grab some of the, the sticky dots. We've all seen my sticky dots. They've been around for a while now. They are probably one of the most, the biggest selling items I've ever had in my entire lifetime. They are self-adhesive dots. There's dots, nothing on one side, sticky dots on the other. Hundreds of thousands of sticky dots on this sheet. All you do is lay your die down, make sure it's against the sticky dots, close it up, give a burnish. No more, no more wet glue. And I sell wet glue, trust me. I mean, there's a purpose for wet glue, but intricate dyes, uh-uh, not when you've got this. it up. Line it up. Stick it down. There you go. Same thing. Open it up. Put this down. You're like, but Stacy, you just put something down in that place. I know, but there's sticky dots everywhere. And where there's no paper, those sticky dots were left behind. So you can use a sheet after sheet after sheet. What if I put that one on there and that one on there? Okay, so then let's Let's just do this one. So I'm going to pull this up again and maybe I move it down just a little bit and we'll put, you have never seen intricate dies go together so fast. But 
Then we have this one. So sticky dots are eight and a half by 11 sheets. You get 10 per pack for $9.99. And that really is a really good price. And I can't do it for any less than that. And I can't get the sticky dots colored. And then this one's already done. And let's put this on top of that. What do you think? Can you do this? Can you basically scribble, scribble, scribble? Scribble, scribble, scribble wherever my, my water. Can, can you literally scribble, scribble, scribble? Mist, mist, mist. Scribble, 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 scribble. If you can scribble, 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 mist, 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 schmush, schmush, schmush. Sound effects required, people. I have no idea what this is going to look like with this green. I should have put down a better base coat. We start with a good foundation. You want control? Move it with your finger or with a paintbrush to where you want it to be. You want to lose control? <laughs> Just depends upon the look you're going for. What is it you want? Pretty with the green though, huh? <laughs> No, I'm not making another card. I'm going to say, well, um, I just have such a hard time leaving all of that there. So I think I'm just going to mist this. And go in. And pick some of that up. And I'll do something with this later. Look at how pretty. You got this. You can do this. Scribble, 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 schmush, schmush, schmush. All right. Holy smokes, we did a lot. Yes, I know. But that's okay. I'll wash my hair and it all comes off. So all I have to do is wash my hair or the dishes. I generally don't like to do the dishes. <laughs> bothering you that it's curling it's watercolor paper it definitely flattens out but you can always just mist it on the back and then it will literally start to flatten out all by itself it's like magic when you watch it just start to flatten out mini this is the most awesome bottle i have ever had ozzy andrew we need way lots of these preferably before january but we'll do what we gotta do look at how pretty is that and then I could, if I wanted to, I could go in and I could pick up some of the color and blot it and anyway. Okay, we did a whole lot today. We talked about the glitter. Glitter that's not glitter, the glitter without glitter on double-sided tape and the Tombow markers and how just e with an easy little zoop, 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 you've made a beautiful, beautiful blend. Beautiful. It is important that you have the N00 blender. Super important, the N00 blender. And that does not come in any of the six packs. And if you like Tombow markers, or if you want to get a gift for a friend, 10 bucks for these Tombow markers is 
awesome and you can mix them you could take all of these greens the light green and the dark green and color 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 and blend 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 and spritz 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 and you'll have oh the colors are just they're just dreamy so the first thing we did was this with our tape with our dye with our little uh, daubers and gosh yeah we sell the daubers you get 20 for $9.99 or 40 in a case for $23.99 but then then we got into the the pretties and really playing with the watercolor and seeing how easy it is to do you put that on a card and somebody is going to go bonkers yes Melissa I just said bonkers <laughs> She's going to watch all the way through. <laughs> all right. And these are simply defined dies, which are limited. Okay. Let me show you. Let me show you really quickly. Cause oh my gosh, we got to go, got to go, got to go. All right. So here it is. Here is the sample board. You have the background die, which we didn't even use in any of them today. You have the base die. You have the detail die. And then you have the, uh, the, frame, the outline die. And then all the little bits and pieces. So you can pop that center right on top. I gave you all the little bits and pieces. And then You just layer. So that's one of the three. Here is the second. So again, you've got a super cool background die that you can use on anything. You've got the base die. You've got the detailer decor die. And then you've got the outline die. And like this big piece here, this matches here. So you could cut this and then pop that if you wanted to. And then all the little things I could squeeze in. To make a finished product. And then the last one is the one I used today. It makes my heart happy. So here is the background die, the base die, the decor die or detail die, and then the finish die. I'm going to turn it this way. And then we have here and here. And then <laughs> here or here. These also could have been that way. Your decision. And then Elena put together just so you can see the background dies can be used. They can mix and match with all of them. It's up to you how you use those background dies. Okay, then we have the Tombow markers. Uh, one, two, let me zoom back a little bit. One, two, three, there's six. Six colors. So purples, reds, pinks, greens, blues, and kind of oranges. Ten bucks each. I don't know if we'll ever get them for that price again. Regularly, $16.99. Smoking hot, smoking hot deal. And then I have the Van Gogh watercolor paper in the postcard size, if you do not have a nice quality watercolor paper. I have also the de uh, Simply Defined uh, white glitter, so it's glitter without glitter. And we, of course, have our lovely Simply Defined sticky sheets that are a hot commodity. We appreciate everybody loving them as much as they do. And then the daubers. 
So a 20 pack for $9.99, I don't think anybody touches us on that price. And a 40 pack for $23.99 in the case. All right, let's talk about samples. Let's look at Belinda samples first. So Belinda, we are short-handed right now. SMS girl Sharon is out and SMS girl Claire, her dad passed away. So she's been out for a little bit. We are sending Sharon and Claire our love. Sharon was Sharon and her husband were sick for a while and Claire, we just, we miss you to bits and you just be with your family where you need to be for as long as you need to be. So Belinda and Doris and Elena have rocked it out of the park. They have picked up the slack and have just, they've just knocked it out of the park for me. Here she used just the background and the bees and the butterflies. Those are all part of the sets. She just used the background and put the bees and the butterflies and the well done. Can't thank Belinda and Doris and Elena. Can't thank them enough. I don't know, do you want it this way? Or do you want it this? I think she meant for this way. For getting everything together and done while we are so short-handed. So Sharon, Sharon, she does all of her samples. Well, they do their samples at home. So we're just glad Sharon and her husband are doing well right now. She background, just the background, cut it in half. And the well done and the butterfly. This is Doris. And here is Doris. So kaleidoscope dies are layering dies. They're exclusive to scrapbooking made simple. They're my designs. And when they're gone, they're gone. And they're value priced. I love this one. Stay positive. Ain't that the truth? And look at how pretty this is. And do you see the, the little um, honeycomb pattern in the back? That's a die that comes with that. <laughs> That's a die. We gave you that little die so you could add accents. How pretty is that? And then we have Elena, who also does all of the storyboards. God bless her heart. So one of the background dies. Stay positive. It's the little things in life. So she covered the dye in vellum to give it that soft, subtle, subdued look. Well done. Follow your heart. Dream big. With the background eye. I think this might be one of my most favorite background eyes. And last but not least, she did a layout. because she got the Minte papers that did the books that had the windows and everything. So she did a layout. Really nice, Elena. Beautiful job. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking made simple. Let me tilt on up, because, oh, let me tilt on back, too. Whip back, back, back. Okay. It's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Thank you for staying with me. I hope you learned something. I hope you were inspired to scribble, 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 and spritz, 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 and smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. And that if you already have these pens, use them. 
use them for everything you can get out of them. You've already spent the money on them. And if you haven't, well, 10 bucks, holy smokes artichokes. And then of course, there's my dyes. If you love them, we appreciate it. And sometimes you don't love them as much as I did. You just never know. <laughs> all right, where are you gonna find all of this great product? Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. And like I said, you may be able to find really great watercolor paper someplace else. By all means, shop local shop local <laughs> and for the the pins if nobody else has them at that price or the of course the dies are here exclusively i will see you all next week for black friday <gasps> i've got stuff planned for you <sighs> okay bye everybody <laughs> see ya